Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and this is Peyton from Peyton on the Radio. And it's when we feel like it o'clock, because that's when we do things here at Pearl of Wisdom Industries, when we feel like it. And we felt like it today. We got talking about a whole bunch of things going on in the NHL, and then I realized we're doing a little series. He's doing one, too, actually. Go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. We're both doing almost the same series, and we didn't like plan that. Just so, just turns out that way. And uh, we were uh, doing each team in the NHL. Mine is a little different. Mine is a little different. Where I'm saying what, how they did in, how each team did in the in the off season, and how that projects to their future, uh, specifically. Because I like to do that kind of stuff. And we're uh, today we're going to be doing the Florida Panthers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think if you're a hockey geek like we are, and I like to call myself that because I'm proud of that. I love the game and every all the insides and out. If you really are a hockey geek, you should be fascinated with this because the Florida Panthers are probably maybe the most fascinating team in the NHL right now. And the direction they're going, the fact that they got a new general manager uh, with Zito and, so, and the moves that he made uh, – what's going on with Bobrovsky and uh, some of the moves that, and and how this all reflects on their future. Um, Peyton's got a really interesting uh, uh, lean on this as he almost always does. That's why I love talking (laughs) to him. So the Florida Panthers, they did talk about some of the moves they did. What what are we going to start with? How about we start with the not signings? that apparently are happening. I mean, I suppose it's possible they could still sign Hoffman, but from everything we're hearing, it's not very likely at all, especially when an ownership says that they're cutting $8 million off of the off of their top uh, and they haven't signed him yet. Hoffman and Dadunov, talk about those not signings first before we go on to how they do the replacing. What do you think about what they're doing there? You know what? I, I didn't mind them not signing Dadanov and Hoffman. Hoffman, a uh, great 30 good goal scorer, um, but he, what we were talking about before, is he's probably looking for a big time contract. And especially with Florida right now, dealing with Tippett and uh, Denisenko, you got two young prospects up and coming that can light the lamppost up. Uh, Dadanov, also, same thing. He's getting older. Um, he is going to be more useful than in Ottawa than he is in Florida. Would Florida love those guys on the team? Hell yeah. I think Dianov and Hoffman would be great players. But the biggest problem is with Florida is they're, pro- they're practically playing a money ball. They're, they are the money ball team in the NHL. They, they don't have a market. And we've seen it last year. They had nobody in the stands. And trying to bring people into the stands when your team has no money and when your players like Aaron Ekblad and Barkov and Huberto are just not enough to bring you there. Um, losing Dianov and Hoffman suck, but there's really nothing you could do when you don't have enough money to bring those guys back in. Uh, yeah, I mean, even one of them, it's interesting, they didn't even look that direction. With that in mind, now that they're not bringing them back, first of all, we have a new general manager. Mm-hmm. from the Columbus Blue Jackets, somebody that has been talked about to be a general manager in the league for quite some time now. What do you think about the change in general manager decision and, and uh, how do you think Zito, now looking at it, uh, for instance, let's start with, the. I think the most incredible thing that happened was the Matheson trade. And how does that reflect on Zito as a general manager? What do you think about so- that move and and his first kind of move as a general manager? Um, Zito has been a very busy GM this 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 summer. Out of the new GMs that we've seen in the NHL, I think uh, Zito and Bill Guerin have been two of the busiest GMs uh, out of the entire league. And um, especially coming over from Columbus, that Columbus franchise has always been about kind of trying to build in from within and um, kind of develop that team. And Bill Zito, that first move, train away Michael Matheson and Colton, who Colton's a very solid guy, but he's just a solid PK guy who you can easily replace with multiple different other people, which they did. They got Carter Brantaghi. They got other guys that will replace uh, Colton. Uh, Michael Matheson was a dumpster fire last year. He was not very good defensively. And picking up Patrick Hornquist, 
replaces Dadanov or uh, a guy like Mike Hoffman. Now, rumors have it that Hoffman and Dadanov might not be the best people in the locker room. Who knows uh, if that is really true, but you're bringing in a guy like Patrick Hornquist who has been the Stanley Cup final before. He's lifted that Stanley Cup. I think the way that Bill Zito is building this team is building it with experience. And I like that. Hornquist brings a lot of experience to the team. He's a, a, a front net presence. Now, sure, he's definitely not the greatest guy defensively. He's going to be scoring most of his goals on the power play, for example, like a James Neal. Uh, he's kind of like the prototype of that, but just way better. Um, I think the deal worked out really well for them. You get off a horrible defenseman in Matheson. You were able to fill in your defense core with some better defensemen than Matheson. I think the deal was great to start everything off for Zito. Yeah, I mean, I heard a lot of people talking smack about this deal because you're getting this old Hornquist guy. But, I mean, if it's true, like you said, the rumors were Hoffman and Dadanoff and the room, so to speak, even if you don't look at it from a rumor perspective, neither one of these guys had, like you said, been there before. Not only that, none of them had worked out a reputation like Hornquist. Hornquist might not be the best defensively because he's a little slow afoot, but it's not because of lack of effort. This guy puts effort out in everything he does, and he puts his body out there to help the team in any way he can. And I think Zito uh, is trying to, it looks like he's trying to bring that type of attitude into Florida, which I think you might agree with me, doesn't appear on paper anyways the last few years to have been there. Which brings us to the next guy I'd like to talk about a lot, and I know you are a lot higher than a lot of people are on him, and I'm actually a lot higher than a lot of people are too, and that's Radko Gudas. What did you think about that move? You know what? I really like the Radko Gudas signing. He's solid defensive defenseman. He's your run of the mill, and he he brings the smack, man. He is a chippy guy. He is, he's built for the playoffs, and I think Radko Gudas will be a perfect fit for that defensive core, especially since you had... I mean, you take a look at that defense core there in Florida, right? Mackenzie Weger, great physical guy. Eric Blad, same with him. But then you have Yandel, Strawman. Those guys are not that physical. They're more of your two-way offensive defenseman. Radko Gudis, you add that into your defense core, that makes it look a lot scarier. Now you have that, that defensive defenseman. You have that shutdown defender that you could rely on on the PK, which especially since last year, they weren't really able to rely on someone on that PK. Right, you were maybe using someone like a Yandel. So bringing in a guy like Radko Gudas, especially for two point five million dollars for the next what was it three years? It's a steal. It's a steal of a deal. Uh, and Radko Gudas will be a great top six defenseman. And, and it's the same thing. Like if we were able to get Chris Russell to that type of deal and not have him at four million dollars, I would love Chris Russell. I still love Chris Russell to this day on how well he plays defensive defense of hockey. And he blocks shots. He's a great playoff guy, but you have to make it to the playoffs for that block shots to really be a big thing. So if the Florida Panthers are really building up this team for a playoff team, I think this defense core will be great. It's the exact same thing as the Dallas Stars of what they did. Right? You have big defensemen like Jamie Oleksiak. You have a lot of puck moving defensemen like you have in Huskinainen and Klingberg and Sakara. I like the way that they're building up the defense core. And I think defense first is the way to go unless you have generational offensive talent, right? Barkov, great two-way forward. You want to build this team like a defensive stud. And that's what they did this offseason with adding Gudas onto the team. Yeah, and we heard a lot of complaints even. I mean, uh, Bobrovsky is known to be a very vocal individual as a goaltender not common but he does he walked out in columbus uh, apparently why he got so mad once he walked right out of uh their arena with his equipment on that's that's <laughs> so he he can he's a bit different and he was fairly vocal about their defense being poor last year and um well with matheson as one of the people in front of you i don't blame him uh but now you have somebody like gudas 
who, at the very least, if something does get in the front there, they're at least going to not like it too much that they're there. And like you said, you haven't seen too much of that in Florida the last little while. Maybe Mackenzie Weger brings it a little bit more now, too. Actually, another guy that we're going to talk about a little bit here when we talk about the young players, because that's kind of what it's about with Florida, which we'll Mm -hmm. talk about here right away. Stillman also brings that a little bit as well. But... um, with uh, the next guy that I thought was interesting was Zito, and you can talk about this, especially with the Columbus combination, is uh, Nudabara. What do you think mm-hmm. about that? Um, it's bringing in more experience and, and bringing players you know. Uh, we've been seeing GMs do this a lot. Uh, we've seen it with them bringing Hino Shraza to the team, which Quenville has uh, coached before there in Chicago. Uh, New Tabaro, um, we've seen him play really, really good. We have. He's been uh, a, a very good player, and, and that's another guy. Like uh, we were talking about, Sergei Bobrovsky needing better defense. Yeah, I mean, when he came from Columbus to Florida, in Columbus he had Seth Jones, Zach Rowensky, he had New Tabaro, he had Savard, he had Ryan Murray, he had Harrington. You had a lot of shut down guys there in Columbus. They were one of the best defensive teams. And it was because Brodbowski is a good goalie and because they had a good defensive core. New Tavaro, when he first stepped into this league, he was a great defensive, uh, great defenseman. He had good analytics. He didn't do too bad pointing up points. And he's just going to be another great guy to have on that top six. Either you play him alongside of a Strawman or you, you put him up alongside of Ekblad. You have so many different combinations that you could do with this defense core. New Tavaro just adds more uh, strength to that defensive depth even with Ryan Stillman, because Stillman's your seventh defenseman now added onto that team. So I, I think it's just really great what Zito's doing for that defense core and building it uh, from within and also getting cheap signings like Udes and Nutabaro. It's really, really smart. Yeah. Um, I'm Nutabaro really fell off last year, though, I he do did. have to say. Now, Zito obviously thinks he has the combination that can go there. And if anybody can know that, Zito is the general man. It was, was assistant general manager there in Columbus. And we'll take his word. We'll take it. We'll, we'll trust that he can see the combination. That's what makes Florida very interesting is he made a lot of moves. Another guy that he brought over from Columbus. And um, I, I imagine he can get way more than when he was over at Columbus or thinks he has the combination for his Wenberg. Mm-hmm. Wenberg is um, an interesting signing as well. Um, raised a lot of eyebrows out there. Was it signing or trade? No, signed, right? Because yeah. he got he was bought he was bought out, right? Uh, what do you think about that? You know what? I I was always kind of a big fan of Weinberg. It was unfortunate what happened. Uh, not too sure why he completely dropped off. But this guy was a fifty point guy, really young. He was coming into the league. Uh, I mean, analytically here, he went from. 2017-18 from being a, a great player to completely fallen off the face of the earth. And I'm not too sure why. Maybe it was less ice time. Maybe it was just him maybe not performing because of his new contract. Who knows? There could be multiple reasons why maybe an injury that he had. Um, there could be multiple reasons why Weinberg kind of fell off the face of the earth. But Weinberg was a really good player. He really was. And uh, I've seen a lot of people saying that their depth down the middle is weak. I mean, if Weinberg produces to what he used to be, this could be a killer lineup. Um, and I think Weinberg, and Bill Zito probably knows this best, right? He's bringing two guys that underperformed in Columbus. But you also got to remember, Columbus is no offensive team. Weinberg is purely offense, right? He is an offensive playmaker. He's, he's going to go out there. He's not going to play very well defensively. And maybe it was Tortorella's coaching that didn't push well on Weinberg, or it was just that he didn't like that defensive play style that they had to play. Going to Florida with Quenville, Quenville might be able to transform Weinberg into a much better player. And he's dealt with that. He's dealt with Kane. He's dealt with a lot of high-end superstars. And I'm excited to see what Weinberg will do uh, playing alongside of maybe an Owen Tippett, who might be able to be a future 30 goal scorer for that team maybe uh but i do like the future with uh weinberg on their team um yeah you're right another guy there's a couple of guys that were in chicago that were not great defensively but he didn't get all freddy about it 
and allowed them to play. Brendan Saad, for instance, isn't mm-hmm. really right. You know, and he just let him go. You know, Andrew Ladd, uh, there was uh, Bufflin. Bufflin was, you know, he just let him go. He said, if you're going to, basically, it seemed like Quinville said to some of the guys in Chicago, if you're not going to be the greatest defensively, you better be go. producing. Yeah, right. go to the front of the net. Bufflin went to the front of the net every time, and he w- he did his thing. And I think that's what Quenville, like, that's what Zito has built with this team. He's built, he's got a lot of players who, I mean, you got defensive players all up and down this roster that could play really well defensively. So that lets Weinberg yeah. able to just go out there and produce. So uh, I like the way that they're honestly building the team, and especially with Quenville as their coach. Uh, I think this team. It, could maybe even make it to the playoffs. Maybe. Um, I, I do think maybe they might have too many players that don't play defensively enough, and I was going to bring this up. Yes, their defense defensemen needed to be old, but their forwards are not really great defensively either, except for Alexander Barkov, who may be the most underrated defensive player in the league, of pe- but people have been saying that for so long that he's not anymore. Uh, you know, Selkie caliber type defensive player like that. Um, Huberto... You know, for Noel Achari, to, to the exception, Brett Connolly isn't really a rock in this defensive side of things. Uh, Frank Vetrano, these are all very shoot-first offensive guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so that maybe might be my little bit of concern here. And a lot have to do with a lot with the problems that Bobrovsky had, especially after having Tortorella, one of the greatest defensive hockey minds as a coach that we've ever seen play a system that is perfectly set for a goaltender. And then he comes and none of these guys are doing anything like that. You can see where the frustration comes from, but um, we got to get into the youth of this team because this is the heart of this team next year. Right? So I'm seeing here on cap friendly cap friendly. It's the best there. I said it, go check it out. Uh, they have, like you were talking about, first Owen Tippett. Owen Tippett has been groomed to be playing in the NHL as a offensive player. One of those guys you're talking about, about a pure offensive, like a Hoffman, somebody like that. Put up 40 points in 46 games in the A last year. That was a good sign. Started putting up the points in the A. Even some assists, because that was the one thing he was maybe not as People knew what he was going to do before. He was one of those shoot first guys or like, you got to pass sometimes, you know what I mean? So people don't know what you're going to do next. And I also see um, Anton Lundell. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of rumblings that they believe that Anton Lundell, uh, I want to say, was it the 11th pick in this last draft? 12th, 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 12th pick in this last year's draft. They believe he's ready right now. What do you think? I, and I hear he's putting up some pretty good numbers in Sweden right now, too. I really like Anton Lindell. Great centerman. And, and it Finland, helps Finland. with uh, Finland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I like the way that uh, he plays. I think he'll be a future centerman for the Florida Panthers um, up the middle. They, they need depth. And uh, before we get really deep into the prospects, I think the way that Zito was kind of building this team is that getting more offense so Barkov can go back and kind of relax and play that more defensive game. He had a drop-off this year defensively, but I think with the players that he picked up, could help them go back up and play good defensively because they're already a great goal-scoring team. Uh, and, and especially Anton Nadell. Anton Nadell, I heard, was a two-way guy. And he, he, yeah. he will add that defensive help to the team, I feel. And he's ripping it up in the league right now. In 17 games, he has 20 points. Not yeah. just that, also uh, a guy that probably won't be talking about very much, Michael Benning, um, who uh, is playing in the NCAA right now. Uh, he has five points in three games. He's playing alongside a Carter Savoy, Oilers prospect. Uh, but I've been watching how Michael Benning's been playing, and I think Michael Benning might be a later on steal for the Florida Panthers as well. Uh, you add in Riley Steelman. Uh, uh, D- uh, Denisenko, Noel, you've got so many young prospects in Florida and also Spencer Knight as well. We can't forget about the young uh, American goalie in Spencer Knight. Um, but the way that the Florida Panthers are building, it's smart, right? You have a bunch of short-term contracts on your team so your younger players can jump into the lineup much easier. And I think, which we started off this episode on with Hoffman and Dianoff, 
I think they definitely believe that Lindell and Tippett could possibly jump into the roster. Maybe even Dennis Anko. I think they believe a lot of players can jump up into this roster. And you might see a very young roster coming uh, from Florida this year. Yeah, um, another one we haven't mentioned yet. And like you said, there's, there's, they have a lot of prospects that are just about on that cusp of being mm-hmm. there. So you kind of see if you're... Um, if you're a Florida owner saying, why am I going to blow money on Hoffman? And when we got these young guys coming up anyways, and you know, they're a small market team and they got to really work the budget. So it it sort of makes sense that, um, there, uh, what was I going to say? Denisenko got nine points in seven games in the world junior championships last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, we talked about that before this all went down. I thought he would have been playing now somewhere, but he's not. But, he got uh, signed a contract, so usually that means they don't go back to the KHL. I think, unless yeah. they loan him to it. But I think they're, I think they're waiting for training camp because I think they believe he's going to be ready to go and uh, ready to play in the NHL. I think that's what they're planning on. Right, and uh, they have and Atu Lauschtrinen, I believe that's how you say it, is another winger who's putting up almost a point a game in Finland. So. There's a lot of players knocking on the door here. And when you first brought up, because we were originally going to do maybe a teams we think are going to be better than a lot of people think they are uh, yeah. video. And we may still do that, but we didn't really have time to get into every detail about it. So we decided not to. Um, Alexi Hepanimi is another one that's been yeah. uh, that's there. Tons of kids here. To, 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 they, they, they're not, they don't have to do a rebuild. They're all ready to play. We could see a surprise team here in Florida, I think. Um, with uh, Sergey Bob, Sergey Bobrovsky, if he can be happy with this defensive changes and get back to where he was before, it's possible they haven't lost that, on, that much here. And this team could be way better than we're giving them credit for, right? Eh? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think they have done a lot to. Um, help this team for the future. Now, it might not be ready this year, but in the future, this team could possibly be a true contender again. Um, and if that defense really does help stop, and I mean, like we were talking about with Gudes, that helps with a lot of, if you start blocking a lot of shots, it saves your goalie from not having to stop 40, 50 shots a night. Um, you you decrease it by a little bit, right? You help your goalie out. You give him some rest out there. So I think, honestly, Florida, one of the best underrated future prospect systems in the league, I feel. They have a lot of nice young Finns uh, all up and down this team. And I think that will help with chemistry alongside of Barkov. Barkov is their, is their franchise for it. He's Finn. You had Lindell. You had Heponiminen. Uh, Itu uh, Lusterainen, uh, Alexa Sorelli. There's so many. Yuho Lamico. You got so many fans on this team that I, I like the way that they're going. I, I like the way that they're going. Not very many teams pick a lot of fans, but the fans, this team is going to look really, really good here in the future. I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, I, I think their overall depth, they could, the, my biggest thing with Florida, as far as whether they have success this year might be that injuries could be a big problem for mm-hmm. them. Uh, any yeah. injuries could be very difficult, but as a whole, I've heard the, the Florida Panthers have got slammed quite a bit for a lot of the things that they've decided to do, but considering the market they're in, uh, what they need to do as a market to be successful and how, Zito worked out that plan and made something and filled some holes that were obvious, such as you were talking about clearing the front of the net to make your $10 million goaltender happy. Not a bad idea to do that. Make your $10 mm-hmm. million dollar goaltender happy, <laughs> especially a guy who's kind of a loose cannon like Bobrovsky. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's a good move. I, I like the Hornquist move. I, I really thought getting losing Matheson was impossible. I didn't think that contract was possible to lose. And here you go get Hornquist, who is only uh, for another two or three years, who's won cups, who can bring that attitude. And that's what I think that's really the word of the day here with Florida. It's having the attitude of winning in Florida. And, yeah. and guys like Gudas. And uh, they brought it when they brought in Strawman earlier. That was a good thing for that. Uh, 
and Hornquist, they bring the attitude, I think, that could very well do a big enough change in this lineup that we may see some surprises here. Well, boys and girls, this has been my full, this is our full 42% here. That's all we have to give. I got to have a nap. It's been too exciting. Talking about Florida Panthers, it's been great. This guy here, Peyton on the radio, is uh, one of the finest in the land, boys and girls. You really got to check out his stuff. He just posted a Minnesota one just before we started this. Now I'm all excited. I want to go check it out. <laughs> I did some videos with him over on his channel. He does it online. We also do John from Off the Wall Hockey, Professor Joe from Sports Fanatic News, and the SteelFlyers.com website, who is all sports website that is absolutely amazing. Huge things happening right now, right, Peyton? Oh, yeah, some real big things, so be ready. Yeah, it's going to be great. Thank you very much, for Peyton, for coming on. You've been amazing. No problem. And all of you guys, thank you for your subscribing and hitting the bell to keep this channel flying. You guys are awesome. Have a great day, and lots of love to you.